Have you ever imagined that traveling can be a source of your healing journey? Imagine a world where marginalized people feel empowered to be their authentic selves and where traveling for inclusion may enhance the cultural wellness of our world. Today's Comfort Kills guest inspires us to travel as a tool to grow emotional intelligence, healing, and practice self-care for a kinder humanity. Jackie Roby is here to discuss the road back from depression because she believes that travel can heal. Welcome, Jackie. Welcome to Comfort Kills. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Jazz. I'm happy to be here. I'm so excited to have you here today. So when we met, you were you came with such incredible energy and you just have you're just like full of life. So I'm really excited to hear just what your story looks like in the beginning and, and where you've come from with that and then where you are now. So why don't you go ahead and just tell us about you? Yeah, absolutely. So I am um almost 40 year old, living in Boston. Okay. I am a sales strategist, social media amplifier in the wellness and healing travel space. Mm, okay. I have been in the travel industry for about 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what really kind of kickstarted my healing journey was my depression. Okay. And that happened about 14 years ago now. So I had been running around. Uh, I moved across the country to live in Boston. I didn't know soul fairly and started over. And I didn't realize that being in a different space is what I needed. I needed to be away from family in order to heal. Okay, gotcha. So I ran myself in circles trying to avoid my feelings. Mm -hmm. um, I socialized like you wouldn't believe. I partied like a rock star. I had um, a reason to go out all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. I had always had a reason to go out every single night after work, mm -hmm. um, weekends, multiple plans, you know, morning, afternoon, and night until one day it just broke. I yeah. broke. Right. Oh. So, 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 Jackie. Was your depression stemmed from something that may have happened um, in early in your earlier life, or was it something that's just always been a part of you and you were well aware, or did it take a little while for you to really realize that's what it was labeled as? Mm. So I would say it is probably a little bit of both. Mm. I am a survivor of domestic violence mm. from a relationship when I was 19. Oh, wow. And that set me on a path to learn red flags and setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. And that was great. But what it also opened was a different can of worms, uh, so to speak, mm -hmm. with my grandfather, mm -hmm. uh, where it came to light that he had sexually abused me when I was little. Oh, my goodness. And oh, wow. that trauma, this commentary, these things that he had said to me and, and done um, in my 20s mm -hmm. shook me. Uh, I, I remember freezing each time. Mm -hmm. I went back to Colorado to visit during the holiday. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to come to his office, wanted me to see something. And it was this picture of me that my aunt had taken when I visited her in New York. Mm -hmm. And it was set up as his desktop background. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that felt a little strange to start. Yeah. Um, and then he said, you know, I, I miss you so much. And I said, oh, I miss you too, Grandpa. And he says, mm -hmm. I think about you all the time. He said, oh, I think about you too. Mm -hmm. And then he said... Um, I think about that time when you were four years old, fast asleep, and you were wearing these gray cotton panties. Oh my God. And it took everything in me not to take them off of you. Oh my God. And in that moment, I froze. Uh -huh. And 
my sister was in the other room and she ended up sending in my cousin to get me. It's she just knew she had a feeling. Mm -hmm. And I told her afterwards mm -hmm. and then I swore her to secrecy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I didn't know how to process that. And it was, you know, within a year of that happening that I was really spun into mm -hmm. a deep depression. I had started going to therapy immediately after. Good. Yeah. Um, I did not take the advice to get on medication soon enough. Mm -hmm. um, I had severe anxiety, panic, PTSD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and fell so hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Jackie, this just this is just stemming from from your grandfather mentioning a memory not even you're you're not even remembering any of this are you at this time at this point at that point no wow wow and at, at a later point did you start to piece things together i feel like sometimes we neglect to see or we don't it's just not as a glaring red flag when it's a family member but then we have the tendency to start piecemealing things together once you realize once you have that like one aha moment everything else starts to fall into place as to well, that explains it all. Was was there a moment like that for you? Yes, absolutely. We'd had another incident together when I was 21. Mm -hmm. um, I was alone with him. He showed me a picture that he carried in his wallet of me being, that was 12 at the time. Mm -hmm. I thought that was strange. And, you know, then we were sitting on the couch watching TV. And, you know, I remember he was rubbing my hand and I felt like, it felt really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It was right after that abusive boyfriend and all of the time that I spent learning about boundaries and red flags. And I thought, what if I'm being too sensitive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And I was putting it on me. Yeah, yeah. And then he started to rip my ear and then he went back to my hands and then he put my finger in his mouth. Mm. Wow. And again, I froze. And I got out of there as soon as I can. Honestly, some of these moments, I feel like I've blacked out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I told my parents. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, had he been drinking? Mm -hmm. And then we saw him that night for dinner. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things kind of kept moving. Mm -hmm. And wow. yeah, just that's it. Has he been drinking? Whether it's a yes or a no, does it matter? Um, exactly. Wow. Oh, wow. And then saw each other for dinner that night because it's it's just Jackie and her little fantasy or whatever go is going on in her mind. Wow. I'm so sorry that you went through that. That's that's very disturbing. And I, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. It, it's. I, th I feel like a lot of times the guests that I speak to who have had trauma that's that that was related to family. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, it's hard to say. It's just. It seems like family. I don't know. We protect each other, and sometimes even when it's not right, it, you just do that because it's what you're supposed to do as family. But when it's not right, it's not right. Exactly, and I know that I spent. It took me over a decade to even tell members of my family what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I told different people throughout the years and it was one-on-one -on -one uncomfortable conversations each time mm -hmm. um, because there's this fear of, will they believe me? Mm -hmm. And also, am I going to be to blame for tearing the family apart? Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, that really, all of that contributed to the level of depression as well. Mm -hmm. mm. So you move on, life goes on, you're able to move forward from that. Hopefully there's no more encounters and you're seeking therapy. So therapy is assisting as well. How long were you in therapy for? Are you still in therapy? And how do you just feel about how that was able to get you through this? I'm still in therapy. I think therapy is the gift you give yourself. Uh, so I strongly believe in it. I don't, you know, 
feel the need to go as often as I used to, but it's just a really great temperature yes. check. Exactly. And I mean, even I think as you continue on your healing journey, there's always things that open up. And I, that's something that really amazed me mm -hmm. was I felt like, okay, I got better. Mm -hmm. Right. And then mm -hmm. I met my husband mm -hmm. and I had never been happier and I felt like I was in a really good place. And then, you know, I, I think a couple of months into us dating, he said, coming over here is like coming to a funeral. Mm -hmm. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're not happy. Uh -huh. And that blew my mind. And so then I started researching uh -huh. how to be happy you know, what, what that looks like and realizing how much of it is a daily choice, mm -hmm. minute by minute decision. Yeah. Um, so that became a really big piece. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, throughout the years, I think as one thing heals, another thing kind of opens up like, okay, you're ready. Yeah. For the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. So one of the things that I speak to my guests about a lot who have gone through a journey of depression and then finding healing and recovery from that was um, one of the best advice I got I received was from Dr. Skip Mondragon. And he had mentioned that going, going to a therapist should be just like you are going to your annual exam, to your well woman's exam, it should be preventative. You should not wait until the moment of crisis to seek therapy because by then there's so much buried and so much to uncover that it's going to take a long time to, to work through this as opposed to seeing that there is an opportunity for therapy to speak to a therapist and making it something that's a daily, a, a regular choice for you to do for yourself. And so I'm so excited that you're saying that because I think a lot of people need to hear that, especially against the mental health stigma. And then it's just still very over stigmatized that we don't hear enough that people should consider seeing a therapist, even if it's just preventative. It feels good to talk to people. You know, when you have that one friend who just wants to listen to you, it feels amazing. And so a therapist offers that as well, except they have additional guidance professionally to steer you into the right direction as well. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think that, you know, I've heard throughout the years of, of friends saying, I'm good. I don't need it anymore. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, and, and then maybe they fall. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I would hope that they wouldn't. And, and not everybody is is like me and keeps it <laughs> consistent in that way. But for me, with yeah. all the different phases of life that I've been through and and new things that have come my way that have challenged me, it feels really good to have somebody there to walk me through and recognize, make those connections. What are trauma triggers? Mm -hmm. um, and what are things that I'm relating back to that aren't real, that they're just feeding into a negative story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. So Jackie, so the road back from depression, let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that and how that looked like for you. So it was a long one, I would say. Um, what I found that was really interesting for me about a decade in to all of that was being introduced to wellness and healing travel. Mm -hmm. And I had been in the travel industry, like I said, for so long, and I never heard of it. And I really just had the thought process that it was about spas. And I love spas. So I was in. Mm -hmm. um, and I was given this gift of overseeing a program, a luxury wellness program. Okay. And so I started to spend time at immersive wellness resorts mm -hmm. and with healers and have different uh, treatments and sessions and, and a variety of things. Mm -hmm. And when I started to learn these these things, some of them, many of them yeah. were pieces that I'd learned along the way that I'd been researching uh -huh. on my mm -hmm. own and the many, many, many books and journals and exercises and workbooks that I had been through. Mm -hmm. um, I could have gotten the support. I could have kickstarted this somewhere else. You know, all of those times that I was on a beach somewhere with a cocktail, which there's no knocking. I love it. Mm -hmm. 
but I really could have used that time to to go within and and get help that I really needed. Mm -hmm. So um, that for me has been something that's really beautiful that I continue now to add into yeah. what I do. And and some of the lessons that I've learned I've learned with this has been um, around self love. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm listing my self loves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's, you know, practices that I put into place when I, I need that, like maybe it's 10 things I love about myself a day. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm challenging myself with, uh, a different thing that I value mm -hmm. about me every day for a year. Yeah. And it has to be something new. Okay. So that way, you know, that shows my, shows me a way to value myself in different ways than I would have expected before mm -hmm. and how I traditionally put myself in a box. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. That's, that's beautiful. And I think, you know, being able to identify that and a lot of times we don't give ourselves credit for the great things that we're doing or for others and for ourselves mm -hmm. and that self check, in a, in a way is, is really just good for the soul, right? Because it reminds you, okay, this is what I, I, I am proud of today. This is what I've accomplished today. This is what I'm grateful for today. All those little things just piled up into 365 ways, you know, because mm -hmm. you said different ones every day. It, it's really tremendously like healing for the self. So thank yes. you for bringing that up because I, I don't think enough people practice that. Self-love, self-healing. I think people um, think that it's this huge grand thing that needs to happen but it's really super simple it's it's super super simple yeah and it's it's not to your point earlier waiting until it's too late mm -hmm. right um just like therapy is not a quick fix right um when you're investing in doing things when in the wellness and healing travel space that's mm -hmm. not the end it's the beginning or it's yeah. part of the journey, right? These yeah. are all things that you take and you implement into your life. Mm -hmm. And and that's one of the things that's been interesting for me on the road from my depth of depression was that I have to keep doing the work. Mm -hmm. You know, I have the opportunity to continue to go deeper. Yeah. And what I didn't expect is years later, I fell back into another depression mm -hmm. and how similar it looked, but also mm -hmm. very different. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that I was thought it was one and done. I thought like I'm doing everything right. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing everything I'm supposed to, but yeah. it doesn't always work that way. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, thank you for, for bringing that up as well is the, the resurface of it. And, you know, I think a lot of times people, those who have maybe never been depressed or doesn't realize that they've been depressed don't understand depression as well. And mm -hmm. so from an outsider's perspective, I think people also have that common misconception that was just like, oh yeah, you know, Jackie was depressed many, many years ago. It was linked to this very specific situation. She's had therapy since then. She's moved on. She's great. And then, and then now Jackie's strong. She's wonderful. She's flourishing, but they don't realize that it's, it's just temporarily, I guess, put off to the side, you found ways to cope with it, but that will never change who and who you are and what happened in your past. And so I think people from an outsider perspective can can benefit from this message that, you know, check on your friends. And if you know that they have a tendency to have these types of emotions, whether they label it as depression or they don't, or they're diagnosed or not, or they're receiving medications or not, I feel, I feel like they will benefit from just saying, understanding that it can reoccur, it can resurface in, in different ways. It's the same thing, um, but it's resurfacing here. And it could come from it could, stress, life changes, any of the above. And just to be there and be, be available to that friend who is now needing you more than ever, as opposed to judging them and saying, oh, here we go again, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, to your point, even that commentary of, of being strong, right? Mm -hmm. I was strong before mm -hmm. and I was strong during and mm -hmm. nobody with the exception of my closest group, a, a key two to three mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. knew what was happening. I was going to work every day. Right. Um, I interviewed for a new job. I got a job offer in the mm -hmm. midst of my 
deepest right. wow. time, right? So I had a really great mask. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And my smile is something that has been something that I'm really known for, right? But also something that's been kind of trained from mm -hmm. the beginning. You know, we were a, we had a, a picture perfect facade. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. smiling was what you do. And I still kind of do it naturally as part of who I am, but right. it made it really difficult for anyone to see. It was like my invisible illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, as a, as a veteran and a wife to a veteran and um, in speaking with different veterans and the silent illness that we speak about is, is, you know, that's, that's the thing that we talk about in the veteran community is this, that tough guy mentality. So here we are as females, it's that confident woman mentality where we're confident, we're more, maybe a little bit more extroverted, or we appear that way. We smile more. We're again, tough guy mentality, but now put into a, a female's body and a female's perception is just that we're confident. We are very um, just proud of, of where we are in this place, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're not wearing that, that mask, that really, really thick mask over us. So, mm -hmm. hmm. yeah. And we want to do everything right. and asking for help was probably the most difficult thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had to learn how to do that and not feel like I was failing. Right, yeah. So what pushed you to understand that this is where you need help and this is this is what you need to, to verbally say or ask for with your friends and family? My anxiety had gotten so bad, my panic, that if I wasn't working um, or walking my dog, she got me out of the house, mm -hmm. I had trouble leaving the house I had trouble leaving my bed. Mm. Um, I wasn't eating. Right. Um, I my diet would consist of a, a naked juice in the morning, a water throughout the day, mm -hmm. two glasses of red wine at night, and a few pretzels. Oh wow! And you know, naturally, you're getting the oh, I'm, I'm shrunk into mm -hmm. I don't know, like mm -hmm. a two. Right. Mm -hmm. And people are, oh, you look so good. And mm, well, mm -hmm. I'm not putting anything in my body besides booze, basically, and the occasional yeah. juice. Um, and there was a morning, a Saturday morning, where I was really panicked. And one of my best girlfriends got me on the phone with her mom, psychologist, and she gave me a really great tip. And she was like, Jackie, I want you to think anything that you're thinking that's negative, I want you to write down the positive opposite. Mm -hmm. Do that exercise for me. It's like, okay, okay. So I got off the phone. I did that for her. Mm -hmm. I talked to my mom. My mom was like, if you need me to come out, I will come out. And I'm like, okay, okay. I got off the phone with her and I think maybe an hour passed and I called and I'm like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I, and she flew out that night. Um, and then she actually coordinated with my girlfriends who knew and they all made sure that I wasn't alone until mm -hmm. she got there. Um, and even then I wanted to go to work. Mm -hmm. And she was yeah. like, why, why are you going to work? Take time off. But I was terrified. Yeah. I was terrified to call in sick. Mm -hmm. And I passed out in the shower, um, getting ready for work, you know, from panic. Mm -hmm. And we had to go to the emergency room. And even then I was still scared. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I don't even know the trip that went into me. I couldn't, I was passed out. Right. So I couldn't, I couldn't work. I was sleeping. I was in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I went the next day. Yeah. Yeah. So just bearing yourself with busyness mm -hmm. to, to cover what's going on deep down. Wow. <laughs> wow. So you've alluded a few times with with traveling and with your healing journey Let, let's get into that how did you realize that this is what you need um in your life was to travel more so that you can can have that healing journey so you know it was a part of my career which was pretty amazing uh but i recognized early on 
how I receive things differently based on where I was in my journey. Right. I would go places and I wouldn't like the destination, but I recognized that it was my anxiety that was in the way. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so then when I started to experience things where I could get the support, mm -hmm. that made more sense. So it was very in started to become very intentional mm -hmm. in my wellness and healing. So mm -hmm. even, you know, on the road, I would make sure that I was meditating twice a day. Um, I, for my business travel, I would bring my yoga mat. Mm -hmm. Um, I would be able to roll that out and do my practice wherever I was that helped and contributed. I would bring my journal so that I had it if I needed it. Mm -hmm. Um, I would write my gratitudes. I would do all of the things and make sure that I had that on the road. And then, um, taking over that program was huge for me. Mm -hmm. And I had an experience at uh, Canyon Ranch in Lenox. And I honestly, I did all the things, uh, but one of the things that was really special for me, I would go and do treatments pretty often, actually. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, spa is my favorite three letter word. Mm -hmm. But I went and I tried new things this time. And one of them was called uh, Bindi Shiradara. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happens when I'm getting treatments is my mind runs. I'm not somebody who sleeps. I, it's funny doing couples massages or couples treatments with my husband because he's snoring across the way <laughs> and I'm like thinking of everything. Um, and in this one, it's specifically supposed to help to clear your mind. And I was like, sure, you know, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. And there, there's this point where the sesame oil is dripped on your third eye. Uh -huh. And I'm laying there just kind of hopeful uh, but my mind's going, my mind's going. And then all of a sudden it was like uh, this bright, I would say bright light or a blackness, but it just went clear and mm -hmm. my mind was silenced. Okay. And I had never experienced that amazing sense of calm. Mm -hmm. um, it was so powerful. And it stayed with me. And, you know, that is an Ayurvedic technique. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I learned, you know, continue to learn more and more about. That I didn't mm -hmm. recognize could even be there. And in the same space, I did a life mapping session mm -hmm. and worked on my career. Okay and focused in that space. I did my first EMDR. So all of these things were there mm -hmm. uh, waiting. And, and as I continue to try new things and travel new places mm -hmm. um, and look at modalities, I've had some of the most significant healing moments okay. in these spaces. Wow. Wow. I love that. I love how something we feel is so common and we, we, especially like the, the approach that you're like, yeah, we'll see, <laughs> you know, and, and then it made a, a believer out of you and, and having that um, occurrence happen. But that's really special. That's really awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, um, my husband is more of a skeptic. Okay. I would say. Mm -hmm. So I throw things in there for him too. And he had the same experience with a Shiradara mm -hmm. uh, in another space. I think that was, um, it wasn't Faina. It was Fountain Blue in Miami. Okay. Actually, they have some really good yeah. services to consider. Uh, we both experienced the Temescal at Shabla Yucatan. So that's mm -hmm. a beautiful ritual mm -hmm. um, that is incredibly releasing. And I went in releasing the trauma. Wow. And um, what a powerful experience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we walk out of these and he is blown away. Mm -hmm. um, so he becomes my biggest cheerleader fan yeah. in, in this space because he's you know, more skeptical it. than me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> That's always great when you can turn a skeptic into a believer, you know, such as yourself, you know, you went in pretty skeptical that it's going to work and it worked. And then here you are bringing in another testimonial to, to also experience the same thing that you did. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
So what was it that surprised you about your healing journey? Was there anything that just kind of like jumped out as a big, this is different. I would never have thought that this would work. Um, in terms of the journey overall or the modalities that have been introduced? Either or, either or, if you have any um, insight on any of those. Well, I would say I, w I always went in hopeful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because when I didn't feel like myself, yeah. I just wanted to get back to feeling like me again. I think what surprised me is I've discovered a deeper sense of who I am. I'm different than I was or that I was putting out into the world. Mm -hmm. um, and along each experience, I've had some really surprising ones. Um, at the retreat Costa Rica, I had done this series of infrared sauna treatments and so those are individual, they're not, you know, the actual sauna itself where there's multiple people. So it's an individual treatment. And then um, it was followed by a lymphatic drainage massage. Okay. Um, and there was a little bit of energy treatment, a little bit of Reiki involved there. Mm -hmm. And I was in this sauna and the first time I went in, it was fine. You know, it was just like, oh, this feels nice. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, it was a couple of days later, I went and did it again. And this time it was so uncomfortable mm -hmm. and I was so hot and I was starting to get really anxious mm -hmm. and wanting like counting the minutes and it's a 15 minute session, I believe. And I just wanted to get out. Um, and the, you know, the therapist would come in and, you know, cut down and check on me and trying to soothe me. And um, afterwards, when I went and got the lymphatic drainage massage, I was in tears. Mm -hmm. And then I had these moments of inspiration. Oh, wow. And I'm a business owner. And so yeah. these moments of creativity are like so beautiful. And I'm laying there and I'm thinking about business. Like I said, I'm not sleeping in any of this most of the mm -hmm. time. And <laughs> Um, it was so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, when I talked through it afterwards, she said, yeah, those were your moments of healing. You were releasing. Wow. And there's a piece of, and I learned that later in the Temescal, there's a piece of the heat mm -hmm. that goes past your, you know, your bone and your muscle and, and everything and into your emotions and your soul and helps to to push things out, push out what you don't need anymore. Oh, wow. Was, that I didn't expect. Nobody told me that was coming. Um, so just even just, I'm just trying all this new stuff. Let's see how it goes. And blew me away. Wow. That sounds really amazing. I think I need some of that in my life. What is, what is it called again? Um, an infrared sauna. Infrared sauna. Okay. Yeah. And then lymphatic drainage. Ah. Hmm. Okay. So thinking from a science perspective, a lymphatic drainage. Okay. Releasing like the infection and the collection in your ah, lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I definitely have to look into that more. And I, I, I yeah, that sounds really, uh, I have to experience that. I need to experience it. <laughs> so I'll be looking that up <laughs> after this for sure. So what tips do you have for increasing joy? Hmm. So I would speak to gratitude to start. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you can list out for yourself three to five things you're grateful for every day, uh, the practice of writing it out is incredibly important. Um, there's something that's really beautiful to that. And then when you're used to doing that and when gratitude just comes to you a lot easier, speaking it aloud is great, but there is something that's sharing it, right? Whether it's sharing it through the motion of the pen and writing it or speaking it aloud to someone. Uh, the self-love piece of it. So this is really interesting. The Transformational Travel Council, mm -hmm. um, they did this designer program that I participated in. And one of the activities was to write out 50 things that you love about yourself. Okay. So first it was 50, 50 things you're grateful for 
or maybe a hundred things you're grateful for, a hundred things that you love about yourself. And the self-love thing was incredibly difficult for me. Mm -hmm. I think I got to 50. Mm -hmm. So I think even that challenge of writing those things out for yourself right. will be incredibly helpful. Wow. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm sitting here thinking a hundred things I'm grateful for. I probably can. And then uh, I'm sure there, I'm sure I can come up with a hundred things, but a hundred things about myself. That's hard. That's really, really hard. Yes. I mean, like, I don't even know if I can get past 20. <laughs> like it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Um, it was actually an exercise I ended up giving to our daughter during the summer, you know, school's not happening and yeah. you're remote. You're going to write down 10 things a day that you're grateful for, 10 things a day that you love about yourself mm -hmm. and then read them out loud to me when you're done Right. Yeah. Um, to try to set up a foundation there. Uh, so those are absolutely things that I would say. Yeah. Awesome. Um, from there, uh, your communication, mm -hmm. right? So a, a big piece of what bogs us down is the negative that we're putting in our head. Mm -hmm. And speaking that out loud, getting your anxiety out or getting that negativity out is incredibly helpful. So either journaling it, which I love for me, that's a great release. Again, it's the practice of getting it out of your head. And then you're like, oh, maybe it wasn't so bad. Or maybe it has to do with something else. Mm -hmm. um, or speaking it out, but speaking it out in a way that isn't, you know, the vent session of let's all get into the negative muck together. Mm -hmm. More of the perspective of solution seeking. Like, is this yeah. real? Is uh -huh. it, am I spot on about it? Is there something, another way I should be looking at it? Right. Whoever that trusted person is for you to have that conversation with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the way you put that without, you know, having a, a venting session and just complaining, complaining, but being really solution centered and, and getting it out so that you can find out, well, from your perspective, what do you think? You know, mm -hmm. now that I've told you this, what do you think? you know, the situation, how I could have handled it, how it, how it could have been handled differently. I love that. I'm all about solution being solution centered. And so that the way it's worded, but coming from a, you know, personal event perspective, I really like that. So thank you. Absolutely. No, I agree. Um, I, I know for a while, as I was coming out of my depression, it was difficult to be with a group of friends because if it got into that space, I had a hard time protecting against negativity. And I wasn't at a point where I had my voice to say, let's look at a solution instead or yeah. to set a boundary around it. So, you know, going into that with that intent and that communication is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. No, being definitely being intentful with the solution going in incredibly helpful. It's one of the things that we practice in healthcare as well, which is um, SBAR, right? So you have a situation, you provide the background and then you have, um, What's the A? Acknowledgement? I can't remember what the A stands for. Assessment. So you provide the solution, you give a little bit of the background information, then you perform, you explain the assessment of what you feel is happening, and then R is for recommendation. So what do you recommend? So the way that we speak to each other in healthcare should always be in an SBAR format when it comes to patient care. So that way we always come with a solution and never just a complaint. Like I'm complaining, I'm venting to you, Jasmine, but, you know, and, and, and just like, okay, well, I hear what you're saying, but what's your question? <laughs> what's your suggestion? <laughs> you know, or are you just here and you need somebody to talk to because I'm here too, but you know, let's, let's, you know, let's not just vent, but also have some, some sort of idea of where we want to go with this. Yes. Uh, and one of, a, one of my favorite things that another guest had mentioned before was, you know, you're on Island A and over there is Island B. And we need to figure out a way to get from Island A to Island B. So what's that action that you're going to take in between? And I was like, when she said that, I thought, oh, wow, I love that. I'm using that forever and ever. <laughs> yes, I'm taking that one too. <laughs> yeah. yes, it's a good one. It's a good one. Take it, take it. And uh, I'll, I'll attribute the credit to Andrea Johnson, to one of my guests. She'll be uh, airing, I think, in season three. So um, definitely from her. Um, but yeah, so... So how has um, 
how has the traveling helped you with your life then in general? I, I hear it's just so many amazing things you're doing in the spa areas, but what about the actual physical traveling itself and the destinations as well? Sure. So traveling overall is changing that space, getting you out of your day to day and giving you a chance to really open up. If you're going into it with an intention, with a purpose, mm -hmm. um, and giving yourself that time and that dedication mm -hmm. to being, to expanding yeah. really, uh, and working through things that you might need to work through or seeing things differently than you did before. Um, or learning about the culture that you're mm -hmm. visiting in a way that is empathetic, mm -hmm. that is an incredible way to take in the world and become a kinder, more inclusive person. Yeah, yeah, wow. And with the everything that's going on right now in the world with the pandemic and the limitations of traveling, what suggestions do you have for those individuals who, like yourself, have found traveling to be very healing um, and good for the soul? What are things that they can do now that can help replace some of the limitations that we have? Sure. So there are some incredible companies out there, um, travel companies, wellness travel companies that actually do bring some virtual things to your house so you can get the assistance that you need mm -hmm. that you would have normally found. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Pravasa has a Wander Home collection and that is digital. So you can uh, be guided through meditations, yoga classes, um, be given mm -hmm. recipes you can cook along. Uh, those That's really beautiful. Yeah. And I've done that at home and even, you know, hiding out in, you know, my bedroom in a two bedroom, one and a half bath apartment where it's my husband, my, our daughter and I, I could still have that space to myself and mm -hmm. feel separate and peaceful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I would say when you're, whether you're traveling or whether you're at home is to take the time to set intentions, mm -hmm. right? So whether you're a morning or night person, mm -hmm. um, I'm a morning person, um, but what is your day going to look like? Mm -hmm. How is this going to be what you need it to be? Yeah. Um, what do you need to let go of mm -hmm. in order to achieve that joy, that positive thing that you're intending? Mm -hmm. um, so being mindful about that, taking breaks mm -hmm. throughout the day. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And even if it's just, you know, walking away and walking around your place for a minute or so coming back, but you really do have to walk away and get up and, and right. get a little bit of movement for perspective. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a huge help. Like I said, keep journaling, keep your gratitude up when you're having, um, if you, live with someone or if you're on a work zoom call that is upsetting mm -hmm. to you whenever that's complete list out three things you're grateful for oh. it changes your vibe mm -hmm. changes mm -hmm. the space that you're in yeah um i am somebody who likes to read for bed i would make sure to keep doing things like that get your mind in the right space and digital detox mm -hmm. take a day a week and get off of Hmm. devices. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first time I've heard that one digital detox. Mm -hmm. Not that it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's probably really good for you. You just did it, but I don't feel like anybody's ever just added it into the category as a must do thing. But I think that's incredibly important. I, I feel like sometimes even if I, you know, if there's just too much going on or, you know, like everything that's been going on in our country and the world and everything. And, and it's just I just have to be able to turn it off and say I am done with all of these fear headlines and I just have to step away, you know, and even if it's just for the night, you know, like I feel like we do it, but we don't intentionally think that we're doing it and realize we're doing it. And that's actually really important. That's a good one to add to the list. I hear journaling all the time I hear, but not digital detox. And I like that. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I love it. And honestly, it helps me bring back joy. Mm -hmm. um, there are times where I'm getting burnt out. And I didn't realize I was getting burnt out. I do social media amplifying for my clients. So I'm online 
all the time and I'm a business owner. So I'm always constantly going, going, going and I love it and I'm passionate. So those are like beautiful things. And I'm, you know, um, and I believe in rest and I thought that I was resting, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I turned it off that I went, Oh, mm -hmm. there it is. Joy's back. Yeah. <laughs> the hope is back. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So Jackie, you've done, um, you've had an incredible past story and learned how to work through it and what resources you needed to get your life in a place where you were happy and you were finding joy on a daily basis. What is it that you've turned around to do with your pain to contribute back to the community? I understand you have a consulting service and can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, absolutely. So my company is called Inspired Journey Consulting. Mm -hmm. I work as a sales strategist and social media amplifier for mm -hmm. wellness and healing travel businesses. Okay. Um, and then I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with retreat leaders, travel advisors, et cetera, mm -hmm. really okay. around that space uh -huh. um, of sales because I'm a 20-year salesperson in, in travel. Okay. But what I've also done is I've started a movement called Travel Can Heal. Okay. And what that is is... Um, a social media community mm -hmm. of people that are on their healing journey or looking to start in need of support. Mm -hmm. It provides a space so that you know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And also where the travel partners who can support along that journey, who can provide that healing and that wellness mm -hmm. can also share. So you're getting the information Mm -hmm. um, in a very clear and concise way. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, so sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Is there something that I should have asked you that I didn't know to ask? Are there any topics you would like to discuss? <laughs> um, I feel like we touched on a lot. Yeah. We did. I feel yeah. really good about it. Um, okay. I appreciate that. No, of course. <laughs> Of course, of course. So if I give you a billboard, Jackie, to show to share with the world, what will that billboard say? That billboard would say, stay inspired. Mm -hmm. It's okay to ask for help. Mm -hmm. And you deserve unconditional love from yourself and others. Exactly. Yes. I love it. I love it. It's beautiful. All right. So if Comfort Kills followers would love to get in contact with you, Jackie, what is the best way for them to, to reach out to you? Sure. So my website is inspiredjourneyconsulting.com. Mm -hmm. I am also on Instagram at inspiredjourneyconsulting. So I would say that's a great way for, um, anybody to learn and follow and understand what's going on in the travel can heal space. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming out today and sharing your story and, and your traumatic past and just, just telling us that it's okay to ask for help and, and move on from that and, and be able to find yourself in a better place through travel, through journaling, through digital detox. Just thank you so much for your wealth of knowledge and experience. Absolutely. Thank you.